I've seen a lot of people start calisthenics then quit just as fast. Their body ends up giving up before they even get started. Or maybe they can't even wrap their head around themselves doing this. That's why you come to me and I'll show you how to get good at calisthenics. Getting good at calisthenics is about having one thing, knowledge. In this social media world where we have so many competing theories and methodologies, starting can be confusing. And that's why we'll break this down into five simple chapters. Starting with chapter one, the fundamentals of calisthenics. Calisthenics is all about the mastery of your body's natural patterns, like pushing, pulling, and squatting. So when starting out, there's actually only a few exercises that you have to master. One of those being the standard push-up, where you start in a horizontal position and push yourself up from the ground. Next up is the basic squat pattern, squatting at least 90 degrees and pushing through the heel. Next up is dips, which is also a pushing pattern, but you're pushing yourself up from a vertical position. And last but certainly not least, pull-ups, where you pull your entire body up from a vertical position. It definitely takes a lot of work. Now let me introduce to you the importance of the scapula. It's those two triangular bones that have attachment to several important muscles. And scapular awareness is the key to calisthenic strength. And these are the basic scapular movements. Number one is elevation, reaching out with shoulders above the ears. Depression is when you unshrug your shoulders away from your ears. Retraction is when you pinch your shoulder blades together. And protraction is when you push your shoulder blades away from you. Having awareness of your scapula gives you the ability to place your joints in the correct position. It's easy to start building your awareness. Scapular push-ups give you the ability to practice protraction and retraction. If you try this out, make sure you keep straight arms. Next are pike holds, which are great for practicing elevation. And scapular pull-ups are great for practicing how to depress your scapula. Now let's move on to the best way for you to avoid injuries. The number one cause is not warming up properly. You should always warm up for at least 10 minutes to a gentle sweat, doing light exercises that activate the muscles you're about to use. Likewise, after your workout, you should also be cooling down with static stretches, making sure to not just walk out and leave the gym. Cooling down is like aftercare, and it's needed for everyone. And lastly, you need to have some kind of mobility training incorporated into your workout routine. 10 to 15 minutes is not enough. You need an intentional day or two of concentrated mobility training. Now let's move on to chapter two, building a strong foundation. We're gonna take a closer look at the foundational exercises I showed you earlier. If you're wanting to progress your dips, you're starting right here. You can use a couch, chair, or table, or even a bed anything that's stable enough for you to get this out. Make sure to keep your elbows tucked and lock out your arms at the top of the rep. Once you get stronger, you should move on to using assistance. Any kind of assisted dip machine or using resistance bands is gonna work well for you. Lower the resistance band you use as you gain strength. This way your dip strength and your progress is significantly getting stronger. Taking a closer look at the strict form pull-up, you can see it's no easy task. If you're looking to master pull-ups, make sure you're arching your back at the top of the rep to activate your back muscles. Just like with the dips, we're gonna start with resistance bands or some kind of pull-up machine if we have access to that. Pull-ups are going to be your hardest challenge, but don't let that deter you from trying this out. Again, as you gain strength, I want you to lower the resistance band you're using. This way, your joints are not getting as much help and your body's forced to adapt to the new stress. For push-ups, we have the opportunity to get creative. If you're looking to progress your push-ups, you should start with wall push-ups. This is for the people that are starting at absolutely zero. And as you get stronger, you can move yourself further out from the wall. I self-titled these as advanced wall push-ups. But the idea here is that we eventually move into incline push-ups. We're lowering the incline as we gain strength, and we're keeping form consistency. Eventually, we'll be at the floor, and we'll have plenty of push-up strength. And it's actually a similar pattern for squats. We're going to start off with chair squats. Think of this as failure protection. Remember to squat to 90 degrees and push through your heels. And as you gain mobility and strength, you can remove the incline or lower the incline as needed. Next up is chapter 3 how to structure a workout. Start every workout with wrist stretching. If not, you'll regret it. And again, remember, we wanna warm up to a gentle sweat, doing some form of cardio or dynamic stretch. And now that we're warm, we're at our highest potential for success. So let's do our skill work right here. Max effort. Following our skill work is going to be strength training. This is going to be the bulk of our workout plan. During this section, you should be doing a bunch of compound lifts and actively seeking out failure. Anywhere from three to five of your favorite exercises for three to five sets should work out just fine. Following the strength training should be any kind of isolation work that you feel like needs more attention. This is for when you're focusing on one particular muscle group. It could be your triceps, biceps, or even your quads. Whichever you choose, just remember you're toasting this muscle, so you're not expecting to use it for the rest of the day. And following this is the cool down phase. Easily voted the least enjoyed and most skipped part of the workout, but it's necessary, so please do it. When it comes to how often you should train, a lot of people think they have to jump right in and go six or seven days a week 
but this is actually going to be counterproductive to your progress. A more welcoming plan is starting with as little as two days a week and then adding an extra day every month until you reach four to five times a week. You're not going to be working out intensely on each of these days, but we're going to separate your training to make sure that we have a balanced development, which makes this the perfect time to talk about how to separate your training. Monday should be a push day. Tuesday is a good day to focus on pulling movements. Wednesday is a great leg day for you. Thursday is a great core mobility day choice. And I've been loving full body Fridays this entire year. Ending the week on Saturday with your second leg day. To see this exact routine in action, check this video out on my page. Chapter four, tips for staying motivated. Internal motivation dies pretty quickly. So we have to make sure that we're developing our skill of consistency. And there's a couple ways we can do that. One of the first ones is having a workout partner. I understand this is not everyone's cup of tea and it's not even my preference. But if you have a workout partner, they can keep you consistent, keep you in the gym at the same time, keep you eating the same clean food, and keep you on the same workout program as you guys both develop yourselves. Plus, it's always cool to share the journey with someone else. Set manageable goals that keep you interested and that make sense. You should not be aiming for a handstand push-up your first 30 days of calisthenics, but a regular traditional push-up is a goal that makes more sense. It's more manageable and they can keep you in tune as you progress to the further stages of calisthenics. Most importantly, document and celebrate your progress. You need to be taking videos and pictures of your form and physique at least weekly. Your body changes so much in a simple month and you don't even notice it if you're not taking any pictures or any videos so you have reference. Your form is getting better, but you need to have videos so you can tell that it's getting better. This will keep you in tune on not only the necessities of your progress, but also the technicalities of what you need to improve further down the line. Chapter five, where can we find more resources? The Strict Fit YouTube page is filled with tons of content, whether you want to start workout programs or start with workout plans and follow along with me. I also have a Discord where you can connect with like-minded individuals in a community filled with openness, where we talk about calisthenics and everything else. Make sure you go to strictfit.com to check out my app and multiple programs. Strict form only.